Are you looking for ways to assess the quality of your data in Salesforce? Are you interested in discovering new ways to capture better quality data from your users while avoiding the junk? Let's look at a few tricks and tools that we can implement to promote better data quality with inside our organizations. This is part two of our series on data quality. So please check out the initial video that I've linked to in the description below. And before we dive into the fun, take a quick moment to subscribe to our channel, Salesforce Explorer. We're exploring everything that is possible with inside Salesforce, so we would love for you to come along with us and join us in this journey. When we want to assess our data quality, we don't have to look any further than AppExchange. For those who aren't familiar, AppExchange is an enterprise cloud marketplace housing over 7,000 apps to help you address business problems. If you go to appexchange.salesforce.com and do a search for data quality analysis dashboards, you'll find this free plugin provided by Salesforce Labs. Once you've installed the app, you can get to it via your dashboards. Now this shows you a range of visuals to help you find gaps in your data. This high level guide is a great starting point on your data cleanup journey. Now that you've reviewed this dashboard, you likely have a few data quality problems to address. Don't feel bad, you're in good company. Most organizations have progress to make on this front. When it comes time to improve your data quality, we need to address the problem at the source, the point of entry. There are validation tools built into Salesforce to help us make headway on these thorny problems. Before we start solutioning, we need to make sure we, are, we really understand what the problems are. Our data quality reports were a fantastic start, and you or your users have likely run across pain points within your environment. Maybe it's duplicate records. Maybe it's the same data entered a hundred different ways. Perhaps it's missing data on critical fields. These known issues likely highlight a mere fraction of the overall problems hiding within inside your environment. The best place to start is by reviewing the data in each object, whether it be custom or standard. We need to identify where we can do better. We need to catalog those fields to define what we're expecting, what changes need to be made to help us meet our business objectives. Say our sales team had an objective to track and convert leads. To do that, we would need the account's name, the company, the email address, the phone, the last modified date, but it would also be extremely helpful to know that person's industry, the company's annual revenue, which salesperson owns that, that account. What are our next steps? If we walk through our business objectives, we can start to build that clear picture of what our data should look like. Once we have that picture, our focus can shift to tooling. One of the best tools in our toolkit is the pick list. With the pick list, we establish a predetermined list of values the users can pick from. So think about this rating field on the lead object. Imagine we hand over defining the statuses to our users with zero guidance. Do you think they would restrain themselves to three consistent options? Me either. Another great option to boost your data quality is to establish required fields. If we didn't require the sales contact's name or either the phone or the email, that contact wouldn't have a whole lot of value. Unfortunately, our data can turn into a patchwork of useless information if we aren't diligent about setting required fields where they're needed. We can accomplish required fields by setting field level requirements. We can do this when we create the page layouts and also by setting validation rule requirements. Setting field level requirements is Definitely the easiest of the three. Within setup, we just need to go into Object Manager and select the object that we want to change that field to be required on. Within Field and Relationships, find that custom field, in this case, color, and we are going to edit that required field underneath General Options. By saving that out, it is now enforcing that requirement on our users. Another way we come at this is via page layouts. Now, we select um, our, our custom field, in this case, size. And if we scroll down to the description information, we click on this gear icon right here, we can select required and save that out. So lastly is validation rules. 
Uh, with this one, we're going to add a new rule. And let's say we're going to require address. So from here, we just need to define what does that, that condition formula look like. And for required fields, there's two that potentially could come into play. The is blank and the is null. So if we select that, we can go to insert field just to make sure that we're naming our, our, our field name correctly and put that within our parens to say is null address equals true. If so, we are gonna say address is required to help out our users to make sure that they're saving it out correctly. Next is validation rules. We touched on it a little bit when we discussed implementing required fields, but validation rules can do much more to help protect, protect our data quality. Essentially, it defines what data is acceptable and kicks back anything that is not. We get a customized message back to the user, providing them with specifics around what it's going to take to satisfy that validation condition. When multiple users are interacting with Salesforce, we can get stuck with a lot of duplicate records. Duplicate rules can help us throw validation when we see a new record that mirrors an existing one. So when we want to manage our duplicate rules, we need to come under setup and do a search for duplicate. In our new duplicate management, you'll see duplicate rules. We have three defined currently already. Uh, one against the account, contact, and lead object, all standard rules. Let's take a look at the contact one real quick. So the first thing you'll notice is there are different actions that we can define based off of what the user's doing. So if they're creating a new record, essentially we could either allow or disallow them to create that record if we hit a duplicate condition. And we can also either alert them and we can kind of report on that, that, uh, that conflict, that duplicate. And we can define that on both each the create and the edit. Also, uh, the mapping is really what makes this, this magic happen. So if we look at the contact, essentially we're saying that if a contact record already exists, we don't want to create another one based off of you know, these criteria that we've defined. And it's very clean because contact to contact, we're essentially mapping to the same fields. So nothing doing there. But if we look at the lead mapping rules, those can tend to be different. So company maps to account name from lead to contact field. So uh, that can keep our data clean and keep both duplicates on the contact and the lead side from pulling over into as new contact records. So we've put a lot of checks in place to help clean up our data at the point of entry, but who's to say that that data is even correct to begin with? We can lean on App Exchange to help us verify that the data entered by the user actually reflects reality. Within App Exchange, if we do a search on data quality, we see a lot of different application options that will help us to verify the user's address, their phone, their email address. Others will help us cleanse our data once it's already in our system, you know, boosting our data hygiene. These apps can be a great addition as you strive to achieve maximum data quality for your Salesforce environment. If you're struggling with data quality concerns and could use an expert to help advise your team, consider the company that I work for, Improving. We have a team of brilliant Salesforce data consultants who can help you identify, plan, and implement measures to improve data quality inside your Salesforce. We would love to have the conversation, so please reach out to us at improving.com. Thank you for taking the time to explore Salesforce data quality with me today. If you found this video helpful, please take a second to like and subscribe to our channel. We have lots of interesting Salesforce topics planned for the weeks ahead, so we would love for you to join us in the conversation. I look forward to seeing you then.